evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. We're now live on the Black Belt Experience. As y'all see, we had everything set up. As soon as I tried to go live a little while ago, then they want to act like I want logged in. So we got that fixed. Uh, but we had a few technical difficulties, but we're live right here, live at the National Guard Army in Greensboro, Alabama. Uh, we got some some special guests here. We got some people here. Experience a live broadcast, so we got a Black Bear experience. We got Larry rolling in late like he usually do. Uh, we got the other fellas. They doing some things in the background. But, hey, we're excited about being back on. We know times are different, but we're looking for people to log in on here and enjoy the time that we have. Because tonight is a very special guest. The first time that we did a live event. And again, Larry eating like he do every show. Uh, but live event tonight. And we're excited to be here in the Black Belt doing it live from the Black Belt. Um, and we just want to let a few people get in. Uh, we got Miss Dayla Maynard. How you doing, ma'am? Hello, hello. Sorry I didn't get a chance to meet you. Uh, but I'll make sure next time I come home, we will make that happen. Uh, we got, got Chef Tab walking in here. What's going on? Here you go. <laughs> we got you live now. <laughs> we got him live, got him in, but we we excited. Um, and to, today, um, we just want to thank the people for tuning in online, but also thanking the people for took time out of that day to come, uh, break bread with us. We had some good food here, nice setup, and had a chance to just discuss. We also have uh, in the building, we have Mayor Rossell here from Akron. Uh, Alabama, and we just got just, just some things going on. So I want to get through the sponsors, want to get through a lot of things, um, and then we're going to do something very, very special that we haven't done before, so you'll see it live tonight. So uh, the sponsors of the Black Bed Experience, we have Kimmy's Corners Creation, which is owned and operated by Kimberly Evans, who is live in the flesh here tonight. Uh, if you in the Greensboro area, you're looking for a uh, a gift idea, uh, some 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 Christmas themed clothing, you can come down to the uh, army right now. She got a table set up, got great deals. You don't want to you don't want to miss that. But if you also want to uh, uh, patronize her business, you can go on chemistcornerscreation.com, uh, or you can go to her website, Chemist Corner. I mean, I'm sorry, her Facebook page, Chemist Corners Creations. A lot of great things. She just hit a thousand followers on Facebook. Very proud of her and her continued support. Um, next, we have the T-shirt bar, uh, which is in Demopolis in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, like like Kim just said, she got children's clothes this night. Children's clothes tonight. But we, at the T-shirt bar, we have uh, uh, which is owned and operated by Lakeisha Davis, who is here in the flesh as well. I call her the business woman in the black belt, but. Uh, if you have any ideas, you want to make sure that you go and you uh, uh, reach out to her. Um, her in Tuscaloosa is on Greensboro Avenue. She just did a big order for me. Um, also, Kim did an order for me, too. So not only do I talk about it, I got I, I make sure that I take care of them as far as with patronizing their business. Next, we have the man of valor of Greensboro, Alabama. Continue to do great things. One of their members is here tonight in the flesh. Uh, Mr. Dara Evans, we appreciate them, what they do and the support and the things that they do in the community. They mean a lot. Portia just walked in here asking about where the food at is in the back. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, hey, <laughs> And the good thing about the night is, hey, hey, just, like I told everybody, y'all see what happened behind the scene. We're behind the scene. But uh, we want to thank uh, uh, the men of valor for what they're doing. Um, and next we have, um, we have the Schoolhouse All Occasion Center, which is uh, owned and operated by Mr. Larry Jones. If you're looking for an event, a space to have an event, a space to do a family reunion, a wedding or something like that. Make sure you go look at their Facebook page, the Schoolhouse All Occasion Center. Uh, next, we have a, a Southern Bite restaurant, which is also owned and operated by uh, uh, Lakeisha Davis. When is it going to be? Hopefully next year. Early part of January. Hopefully early part of January, what she said. And she got a lot of creative ideas. She was telling me about a, a burger that they got that I'm going to make sure. A connecta sausage and beef mix. So if you know, like I know, with that connecta sausage, yeah, 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 it's gonna be on point. Um, and it's in Tuscaloosa, correct? Uh, 
3801 Greensboro Avenue. All right. So go ahead and check that out. Now, I do want to give a special shout out to things uh, created uh, by uh, uh, Cordelia Page. She's did the setup here. Real nice setup here and here today. So I really appreciate her and what she do. So we got all of that out the way. Right. And what we're going to do right now, we're going to do a few other comments and then we're going to get to a special, special thing that we wanted to do. Uh, what's up, Rod Rodney? What's going on? Uh, and we have Chris Hill Jones in the building. Real good to meet her. Uh, Jadra in here too. <laughs> hey, Jadra, how you doing? <laughs> uh, Joyce Jones in the building. Um, uh, yeah, tell them, Jadra, it's real nice. Y'all missing out. It's real nice in here. Jadra giving us a compliment, so y'all know that's a good thing. <laughs> what's going on, Jadra? How you doing? How you doing? Um, Rodney said NFL football. We got Rodney Cannon, the mayor of Depot. The mayor of Depot, Alabama. And again, I'm sorry. Look, 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 look. Hey, listen. Look, Robert, Robert Tabbitt, I don't want tonight. I'm glad he fired up. I'm sorry. The, the deputy. The, the deputy mayor of, of Depot, Alabama. No, we need to really have it. We need to vote. We need to vote. <laughs> Y'all got enough people to have a quorum for Depot. <laughs> but right now, I'm with you, bro. You yeah. can be the man. I'm a, I figure out another no, job. No, no, <laughs> no. We already done elected our mayor. Uh, Sheila, Sheila, um, all with you, Larry. Gotcha. Gotcha. Always be you with something. <laughs> Jerry Brown's tuning in. Uh, Mr. Prince Hines, how you doing, sir? I didn't get a chance to get over to Utah like I wanted to. And I wanted to be, uh, it's a soul cafe over, so, over, over there in Utah. And uh, you guys can go, go check out their Facebook page because them pictures they be posting. They had like some Cajun oxtails, some Cajun wings. I mean, I was like, I wanted to get over there, but I didn't get a chance to do it because of the weather. But uh, Tara, what's going on? Hey, Leandra Jones said, Duck is, a, is an outlaw today. He had a special request to wear that hat uh, today, so he 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 wearing that hat on a special request. Cindy Jones, hey, she said hello everyone, and Miss Dorothy Jones, always watching in from Tucson, Arizona. Thank you so much, Crystal Small. Thank you. Now, with all of that being said, we got something special that we wanted to do tonight, right? So we had an idea, right? And we know that we all talk about community and doing things for the community. And there's people, there's pillars in the community that have been doing things for a very long time for the people in the community. And one of those people we have here tonight, right? And that's Miss Ola Mae Hobson. Mm -hmm. And we wanted, <laughs> we wanted, we wanted to, we wanted to recognize you for the work because you already put it out that we can come and get something to eat. You've been cooking for the community for 30 years. And from the Black Belt Experience, we want to present you with the Community Coalition Award. Showing of our appreciation to you of your dedication to the community of Greensboro. And for those that can see it, this is it right here. All right. And we got a small token of Do appreciation. Come on, stand up. Come on, stand up for it. All right now. you do because it means a lot man and i know you do it from the bottom of your heart you do it from the bottom of your heart and i would tell you the things that you do from the bottom of your heart live with people for the rest of their Amen. life Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, all right, Portia, be quiet over there now. <laughs> but we still have two more people we want to recognize. They've been doing things for years as well in the Black Belt. They recently uh, combined to host a, a, a free blues concert here at the National Guard Armory. We have Mr. Brandon Lee. And Greensboro own coach Lorenzo Ward. So we really, really, uh, we're going to get this to them. We just wanted to just take time to honor and appreciate people because guess what? We don't take that for granted. And we don't want us to feel like we take things for granted. When people do stuff for you from the bottom of their heart, 
it does something to just say thank you. It does something to say appreciate. I, I would tell you, if you really think about it, um, I can just use myself as an example. As a father, I do anything that I can to provide for my family. Not that I do it for them, but it does something to say thank you. My mama cooked for me because my mama lived with me. She makes sure I eat good portion. But mama, uh, <laughs> she cooked for me every day during the work week. And when I come home, I can walk in the house and I can smell that good food. And I tell her, thank you every day. Why? She don't have to do it. And I appreciate that. And I would just say that we just wanted to show you love and thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And then do your job when someone come up and say, I want some to eat. Mm -hmm. Or do you have a plate for me? And then he said, I got five children. One family will come up, some of them have 15. And that do you good. Yes, ma'am. You know that this food is going to something, you know, to help someone. Mm -hmm. And people have really been nice to me. They give me food, they give me donation, whatever they give me. I got a ball. I'm going to put it on the table. I'm going to put it on the table. Whatever it is, I'm going to put it on the table. Because I let the people know. I'm not getting this for myself. This is for other people. And I really thank y'all for what y'all doing. Thank y'all so much. And if you can come down on Christmas Day, come down and look at it and see what we do. I don't know how long I'm going to go on doing this. I don't know. I wait until he tell me to stop. When he says stop, then I stop. Because God gave me the vision to do this anyway. Not me. Because you can't get what ain't here to you. They have God in your life. So he gave it to me. So when he tell me to stop, then I stop. But well, until then, I'm going off as far as I can. So I thank y'all very much. Thank y'all so much. Mm -hmm. If you're yes, in the family, if anybody, uh, send them down there. Please. For over the years, we've been feeding over 300 people. This young lady here, please, if you know anybody. This young lady here has been with me ever since my trip for 30 yes. years. She's been right there with me by my side. Mm -hmm. When I look around, she's coming around the corner. <laughs> and she brings somebody with her. So she's been with me for 30 years. No matter what comes, simple. So you said that's on Christmas. Christmas Day. Christmas Day. At, the depot. You'll see that at, at depot. You just go to the metropolis of Depot, Alabama. <laughs> and you're going to be right there. You're going to know where they at. No. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You, you said something that reminded me about my grandma. You know, and that's about community. We keep talking about community, but we used to feed each other. We made sure people was good. And my a story they tell about my dad. My dad used to be mad at my grandma because my grandma used to work. You know, a lot of people back in the day did domestic work, and my grandma worked for this this family, and they loved my grandma so much that when they bought groceries, they made sure my grandma got what she wanted. So grandma used to get what she wanted to go back and cook and feed the whole neighborhood, and my dad be like, "Why are you feeding all them people?" Right? But when you said that, that made me think about that because that's that right there is love. And we talk about community, that's service, that's serving others. And a lot of people wear a lot of titles in the community, but the word minister means to serve. And when you're serving people, you're ministering to them. And I, I just applaud you. Uh, um, and when Duck told me how many years you've been feeding, that's a long time. That's a long time, a lot of people. <clears throat> if I just did the math right now, if it's 300 people a year for 30 years, that's 9,000 people you fed. Think about that. It's more than that. But sometimes we have gotten up to see about three children. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking this year, we get more than that. We need to do more every year. I look to do more than three children. More and more. That means you fed the city of Greensboro five times over. Think about that. And when you start to look at that and the impact, all because you was obedient to the voice that God told you to go feed people. And, and, and that's what it's about. And, and, and I know I'm feeling, feeling real good right now because that, that, makes my heart warm and when you serve people so we just want to thank you for that uh thank also uh mr lorenzo coach lorenzo ward and brandon lee for what they do for the community uh it speaks volumes so we just want to go on and 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 get on the show get with the show and we're going to talk about some things so uh for those that don't know <clears throat> i shared a uh uh an article on the black bed experience page earlier today 
Um, Alabama.com published an article talking about the, the, the citizens in Perry County that they're outraged about the $30,000 fine that ADEM, the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, fined Arrowhead Landfill $30,000. This is the first fine that they ever had since they established in 2006. But they got fined $30,000. Out of that $30,000, $7,500 would go to ADEM as a fine, and the rest would be used to just fix the road on Highway 80 going into the uh, right before the city of Uniontown. And they say it was because of dust. Now, everybody know at the beginning, when they first started it, there was uh, a lot of environmental concerns because all of the coal ash that they brought down from Tennessee, which had a lot of toxic chemicals in there. And the reason why um, they, they did that uh, is because the people up there didn't want that toxic stuff. And they, they came down and they, they used, uh, they use the um they 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 establish the landfill and i will tell you it is a, an atrocity for the local government and the state level government of what they're allowed to happen to the citizens of uniontown that landfill uh um the 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 chemicals toxic chemicals got into the water supply a lot of people have been sick getting sick around there i don't know you guys remember the movie uh uh early 90s uh called Aaron Brockovich. Uh, the bear, that's what happened in Uniontown. That's exactly what's happening in Uniontown. And since they've been ex since they've been founded, since they established in 2006, they made over $212 million that that landfill has made. And the ADEM, the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, only fined them $30,000. Now, they can get up to what is it, four tons, Portia? How much they can get up to 15,000 per day? Yeah, they can take up. It take up to 15,000 tons. It can, hold, it can hold about that much. That's how much it can hold. It'll be the fourth largest landfill in the world if the permit passed that we're planning. Yep, and the permit has already been passed by the county government that, uh, in Perry County. Hmm. They didn't consult the, the citizens of Uniontown. And they say that well, that's on county land, but the 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 state get a uh, dollar per ton, the county get a dollar per ton, but Uniontown don't get nothing, and they are the people that suffer, right? And this is what we talk about, so we can understand that when we elect certain people, what they're doing to those people. It's people that's sick, got chronic sickness because of the landfill. The landfill made two hundred and twelve million dollars, and what do, what did the city of Uniontown get? You know, we, we keep, I have no idea. We keep, uh, we keep electing these people that we see over and over don't have our best interests at heart, right? And I, I, I will tell you this, I charge people to call the state, I call the governor office. I provided the governor number, personal number, uh, to her office on, on, on the post in the comments, call your state representative, call your state senator, and for the citizens in Perry County, call your chairman, because your chairman county, the chairman of your uh, county commission don't have a public number out there that you can find, and I wonder why. But call him and let him know, because he's already been on record that said that, you know, the people just emotional about it, and, you know, ain't no truth to it. But I will say this, this is what we talking about in the black belt, by black people that's been elected officials continue to do things that hurt people and take people's lives. All just to pad their own pockets. Because there's no way in the world that the people, think about it, if it was here in Greensboro, we'll put it right outside the city limits, right outside the city limits. But everybody that's out there that right by the landfill, they use city utilities. <laughs> no, think about it. And then somebody will say, well, it's not it's not a city issue because it's annexed to the county. And your people are sick, you'll feel some type of way about it. But I say when you look at those things, it makes, I'm telling you, that's why we advocate and we try to get that information out so that people can understand what it what what is really going on. And for example, $212 million, however many tonnage that they had of that, the city of Uniontown should have got something from that. They should have got a should have got 
I mean, it shouldn't look like what it looked like now. But they still making all that money every day. And, you know, they, they, they get tired of Porsche talking. But then then I also want to go over like this. That, that done. And I know we talk about Perry County a lot, but that's when you, you it, it will make you sick to your stomach. That they have the water board there in Perry County. Do you know what the water board do in Perry County? Uniontown. The water board in Uniontown, they'll have a meeting on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock. In the morning. Now, who can be there at 10 o'clock on the Tuesday? Now, Porsche, I'm asking a question. Do they allow people to speak? Uh, yeah, you damn for the coming. They do have for the coming. Yeah. But I also heard two, two, minutes. two minutes, but I also heard that when you go and you ask for public information, they, don't never, give it they never give it to you. Yeah, but that's what we're talking about. And these are but things. But they don't really know what's going on. They're being dictated to. That's the problem. They're being dictated to. They're, they've been told. You you, you got to understand the background of what happened. They they got they gave them $26 million uh, to fix the wastewater problem because they got embarrassed internationally. Mm -hmm. The state of Alabama got embarrassed internationally. And so they gave $26 million, and they did not want to give it to the city because the city did not at the time the the last administration had not done a budget the entire time that they were in office and not done an audit so they could not give that particular type of money to them because they didn't even have any financial records from the city how long how long how, 12 years about 12 years of no budget and no audit yeah under, under the leadership of a guy by the name of jamal hunter jamal hunter left the city in a negative four thousand dollar uh in debt when the new mayor that got elected in 2020 took over yeah. And so, um, but you, you're looking at, uh, he spent every dime in the city, every account that the city had was in the negative when the new mayor took over. And so they didn't trust that. And so that's why in order for them to receive the money, they had to set up this board. So they threw together, he put through together this board who has been dictated to by a group of white people, uh, that are, uh, 40 years in the wastewater game who only does business to black areas. Mm. They have never had a white city that they have done work in because the white cities know that they are crooked. Mm. And so they go and they take advantage of the lack of knowledge of communities. They're doing it in Wilcox, they're doing it in Lowndes County, and now they're doing it in Uniontown, Alabama. And so because the water board does not understand the wastewater world, they're able to sound good. Anyone can make something sound good to make it believable, but because they don't know, they're making those decisions based off that. And they were looking at us at first like we were the enemy because we were telling them that until we start getting the 40 request and the 40 request came from the uh, federal government. That's the freedom of information that Mr. Uh, Benjamin Eden, who's the on the Perry County commission, he sent in a request. Um, and one of the things that we did, we, we began to see, receive the federal documents. A lot of the documents that we we're getting, they blacking out the information. So what we did was we got a white guy who wasn't affiliated to with the city. They know he affiliated that. So I can call his name. His name Lynn Phillips. We had him to, to send in for the same document. His wasn't blocked out, ours was, mm. because they didn't want us to have certain information. Once we got that particular information, we were able to prove a lot of the things that we were telling the water board what was happening. So they kind of scared you a little bit, but they're growing on listening to what we have to say because they realize that we're not the enemy. We're trying to help and make sure that these people are not just throwing something together and then five and 10 years down the road, they're going to come back and then say that, oh, like, you know, the first, you got to remember now, in 2012, $4 million disappeared. Mm. They said that they fixed the, they fixed the problem and they did not fix the problem. So, they, and then, so our water board, uh, listen to this, they hired the same people that messed up the first time mm -hmm. because they were dictated to do so. And it was a two, three vote. And so that one, and so one positive thing, the new city council, is replacing each water board member as their terms are coming up. Next year is three of them that's up to be taken off and all the city council members have already vowed to replace them. So what we're doing as an organization, which is Black Belt Women Rising, we're seeing people to go get trained so we can be able to present the city council with a group of people that have been exposed to the wastewater world so we can start making better decisions for the city of Uniontown. Well, you know, Portia, I, I appreciate you breaking that down because that's showing the politics behind things. And then that also showed that also showed that uh, um, it also shows too what 
what, what people don't realize. There's a lot of resources available. They had $26 million that they gave. There's a lot of resources available. And you got a lot of people out there looking to exploit those resources off of the ignorance. The, and I'm not saying we are stupid. There's a difference. Ignorance means you don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, that's that's the difference with that. And I want one. They, they sit there because this is what they do. And I will tell you, once you start going deep, you'll be like, man, you'll start to see that. Why I'm a libertarian. Yeah, you'll start to see this. You'll start to see, OK, people get inside information that this is coming down the road. So people will go and establish businesses mm -hmm. just to get it. Perry County, for instance, you got minority trucking in Perry County got awarded the uh, contract in November of 2020 for, for the uh, pick up the trash in the, in, the, in the county. Minority trucking was established. The LLC was established because the only thing you can do is go Google minority trucking, LLC, Alabama, and it'll tell you when it was established. And it was June or July 2020. You mean to tell me five months later, a company that was established is, is, has enough credibility to be awarded a contract for an entire county? If I just start my business right now, say so I, I do electrician, electricity, would you hire me in five months to do your house? You'll be like, wait a minute, I need to see a little bit more just so I can understand. But guess what? It's certain people that sit on certain boards that make certain decisions. Now you go back and look at it. I just did a little bit more. Uh, did a little bit more digging. And the digging that I looked at was this. You start to see, okay, uh, and I'm going to go ahead on and say it. I put it out there because he put it out there. Um, um, county Commissioner, uh, the Chairman of the County Commission, Perry County, Albert Turner, put out that Minority Trucking just received a new truck. It was back in November. No, they said they, they received a new truck, right? The truck was partially financed by Tom Bigby, uh board, which Albert Turner sits on the board. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when you start to look at a lot of this stuff, you'll start to be like, well, wait a minute. Why is this happening? And you start asking these questions. And what they do is they don't want us to know these type of things so we can't ask them. Because guess what? Now I can say this. I can say, hey, look, I'm going to give I'm going to give two hundred thousand dollar or two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar contract so that they can provide this service. But I know that they ain't going to be able to do that. But I, I can sit on it and convince other people to vote with me so that they can go through. But guess what happened? You just set your business up. The city, you got people that don't even have trash being picked up. When you go in Perry County, they don't even have trash cans. They give you these white plastic 55-gallon uh, 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 drums. Think about this. It's 2022. But we keep electing these same folks, and we keep doing it, and then they get there. You don't hear nothing from them until right before election, and they come to you talking about straight ticket vote. And they won't come to your church, tell you what they're going to do. But then these same folks been in office for 20 plus years and we don't see them advocating or asking these questions. That's something that we, 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 it's frustrating, but that's something that I, we always talk about so that we can, we can think about it. Now, with that being said, you got a question? Go ahead, Lamb. I just want to know is, is the fact that they're um, I know, I forgot wow. the county, uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was more of a Georgia white county. Um, the same type of land field tried to come there and they blocked it. But when it comes to the majority, you know, black areas, for some reason, the block is not there. Uh, is it that we're that ignorant or we just don't care as a people? Because it's proven that coal ash uh, is harmful. People are dying from it. But are, are we just that ignorant as a people, or we just don't care about one another and the ones that are in these positions just about their dollar? Well, I, I feel, I don't feel this either. I feel that we don't understand. You know, you don't got a big mouth. Hello? It's a lot going on with this mic here. Um, I feel that, you know, sometimes you're in a position that you don't know how to proceed. You know, you see a problem, but you don't understand 
because you, the process of how to make an argument, mm. or the process of how to do this, you know, those things, I think if we, and this is what this panel is here, it's gonna edu educate you on how you can make a difference. Because as an individual, we feel like we can, yeah. but you actually can. And I don't know, I don't believe it's ignorance, and I don't believe that we don't care. I just think that we don't understand how to proceed. Well, I, I think I mean, a little bit. Well, I think probably execution. Let me get it real quick. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I, I got to get you, brother. One thing about black folks, you know how to make an argument. Right. Every time you have a church meeting, it's an argument. Right. If black folk don't know how to do that, else, <laughs> we know how to argue. But can we execute? We just argue about the wrong stuff. We argue, but we never execute. We complain, but we don't. We never execute. And I think that an execution though, is not happening because we don't know a process. You know, when you ask people, there's an argument in the church with the leader and not the members. If he has his agenda. Setting forth, mm -hmm. and if he can stick to that agenda, come on now, it should not be argument. But if he's weak mm -hmm. and well, trying to please the people, mm -hmm. instead of following the agenda, mm -hmm. he will be an argument. Yeah. And yeah. if an yeah. argument arises, mm -hmm. he should be able to take off the rest. He should be able to. Mm -hmm. If not, you just put a hat on. Uh, hold on, hold on, let, let, let me, let, 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 let. So I, I would say that, right? I don't disagree with you. No, listen, no, listen, no, I don't, I don't, and I, no, listen, I'm gonna say that. No, listen, I'm, I don't disagree with you on principle, but through application, there has to be accountability of all parties involved. Because I can't just say it's on the pastor when you got people that's in, 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 in the, I can't just say it's on the pastor when you got people that pew members that want to run everything. And, and, and this is what I'm saying. And, and it ain't got nothing to do with you weak or not, because I done seen stuff growing up in my entire life. And it's actually happened to my father where people want to come in and they want to run it and they want it to go their way. And the pastor can say, hey, this, that and the third. But then you got especially where we had in the black belt. You got a lot of churches that got a lot of kin folks in there. And you disagree with one of their kin folks, then kin folks start acting a little funny. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, the, yeah. Church, the, the power in the pews. Mm -hmm. Everybody heard it. Mm -hmm. and, and there is no biblical principles in a lot of our black churches. I'm telling you why. A lot of folks don't run in on their job. True. A lot of men ain't running their job. Won't say nothing on their job. So they come to church. It's my turn to run something. Mm -hmm. And they run the straight in the ground. So the pastor can only do a lot of times the pastor will stand. But oftentimes he don't live by himself because a lot of these are family churches, and I don't want to make my uncle mad, I don't want to make my mama bad. We'll talk behind the scenes, but we won't just stand up and support. We with the pastor. But if policy is in you place, if policy is in place, if policy in place and, or bylaws or something, a lot of don't have bylaws. A lot of black people don't have bylaws. That, that's an administrative issue, right. and we need to fix it's it. It's a historical it. issue because we we doing it the way great granddad did. Right. Right. This how it was, but, but they're real. Right. And then when you present by laws, it's a fight. But you know what? The thing, the issue is that we as a people, we never let kids grow up. So we continue to do things. So, for example, when we see Portia, yes, Portia was Portia from Greensboro, but Portia is a very knowledgeable woman. And black people cannot get past the part oh they're just portia shepherd right there they're ribbon shepherd them door so as we grow in the white community they let the young people run when you don't know no better you can't do no better and if you don't expose yourself to new things or learning it a different way that's why you get education you see use all this stuff because they showing you different ways of getting it done we we down here i come here and build a whole house no had to pay nothing in Tuscaloosa, I can't even put it in on my mailbox without paying a fee. And not in the mob. Period. Go ahead, Well, I got two points. But they always The first home. point is I have started saying, and what y'all have saying is we say black people. And the thing I have learned is go on in our communities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have, if we, I, 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 I'm always in two people on Instagram, but they like black people know that's your experience. You see what I'm saying? A person in a one home, you know, well, somebody on Instagram, she was like, black people don't, um, they don't do this and they do that. No, that was your experience. 
a lot of times if we're not exposed, if you're not around white people, you're not around Chinese, different, you would not know. They're actually harder on themselves and their kids than we are. And I tell people all the time, I say it's a lot of times we saying we got discipline hard, but if you, when I talk to people who are like Chinese and stuff like that, they really have their discipline different. And the thing that I want to say is to Larry's point where he said, are we just that ignorant? No, we're not ignorant. The thing is, as a politician, a lot of times they're, they're taking money. You have to say, I love my people and I love my community more than if you give me $500,000. Because for me, as a person, as a black woman, I could not sleep at night if I was a politician and I rode around Uniontown. I rode around Greensboro knowing what my community can be, knowing that I'm in a position to to bring my community higher and I don't do it. The thing with the cold edge is, and this is my last point, they know that it has to go somewhere. They're not going to put it in a white community where they have the money and the resources to fight it. They're going to put it in the black neighborhood that's poor because they don't have the money for lawyers and things. And you can look at statistics. If you look at white income as opposed to black income, we don't make it. Yeah, you have more black millionaires now than you ever had. You have black people doing better. But I think the median income for black household is like twenty some thousand dollars. And for white households like a hundred and some thousand. The net worth. Talk a net worth. What so net worth. Income, net worth. Yeah. Net worth. So I can take this to a place where I can see I got a politician that okay, say the mayor, he said he made two hundred and seventy five dollars a month. Well, I can come in and say, hey, I I give you five hundred thousand dollars. Y'all vote this way, not this thinking way. how it's gonna affect your community. It's, it's not ignorance. It's just people not, want the money and not, they're not, willing it, to sell out their community to get it. So, and let me say this: I'm gonna disagree with you. Man, and here's why I say I'm gonna disagree with you. you here's why I say I'm gonna disagree with you. Prove them wrong. <laughs> 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 it has nothing to do with the income that people make. The people just don't want to rise up. When the people get tired of being tired, they have to stand up. Mm -hmm. Because we all remember Campaign 2000. Greensboro used to be just, the people in Greensboro used to be just like the one in Uniontown until to a group of people, along with Reverend Shepherd, they decided to band together and put together a team, or organization, a game plan, or whatever you call it. And they rose up. And that had nothing to do with money. It's just people just tired of just being sick and tired. And when once the people rise up, all of that stuff will stop, guaranteed. But, but Jason, I, I would just say this. It is ignorance to a degree. And this is why I say this. I think when people hear ignorance, we're thinking that as an insult. No, I'm just saying you have to look. If the difference, I say they stupid. Mm -hmm. No, no. I'm, I get this. I, I, but no. the, I, we, can, we cannot say that. I money, money don't have anything to do with it because it yeah. does. I, I mean, and you can say this too. If I got a million dollars, mm. I can't be, if you call me with 200,000, you can't buy me. Mm. You know, we... Money matters. It is the United it, States of America. It's a capitalist country. I'm saying matters. fighting the problem in so, order to fight the problem to fix the problem. No, let's translate. I'm talking in about order it. to fix the problem, it don't <laughs> take money. It just takes enough people to say we're tired. We're talking about nobody in Uniontown <laughs> has rolls up. If anybody in Uniontown <laughs> band together, oh, oh, go, ahead. Do, go ahead, Porch. Branson, Alabama, which is a town in um, in Connecticut County. Uh, Repton, Alabama. You never heard of it, but Repton, Alabama, uh, is a is a has a white mayor by the name of Terry Carter. Terry Carter got together with her uh, citizens. A lot of them fight when they wanted to bring, which would have been the largest landfill in the world. To it would have been five thousand acres of a landfill in the world. So the county commission did a similar thing like they did in um, in Uniontown, but she stood up. It cost them six hundred thousand dollars to fight that landfill for
for coming into the area. They did fish fry, they raised money, they got some, you know, she went to meet with people to get that money together so they could fight. It took $600,000 just so they could pass the law. Now, I want to go back. They used Uniontown as the source of their defense. They didn't go the race route. They went the evidence route, which is what we're doing now, because they were able to prove what they did wrong. So now the law that they had passed is before a landfill comes into the air, before all they had to do was get it passed through the state, which is what Bobby and, and Aber did, got it passed through the state, and, and then they made the decision. By the time Pastor White found out, the decision was already made. Now, the nearest town has to agree. If any party disagree, the landfill can't come. So even though the state agreed and the county agreed to bring the landfill, because Repton voted no, it did not come. That did not happen because that it happened because they used Uniontown as evidence to show this is what happened when you do it the other way. Well, poor, and it cost them the 600 grand. Portia, no, I got a question. But well, is it possible? Hey, so let me show you this. Did they wait until they got the money in order to go fight? No. Nope. They stood up first. You said after they stood up, they yep. started having fish know. fries. They raised money then. So, so it takes for the people to stand up. And when, once you stand up, you got people from all ethnic groups. They would donate. They would give well, you to help them fight has, their cause. But Black Belt Citizen has done that. And because of their effort, international things have happened. That's why Michael Reagan, who's the head of the EPA, has his job now because of the work that, that Black Bell Citizen did, and he was involved in that. And that was one positive thing that I can say that Joe Biden did. The lead counsel for the EPA now is the, is the same counsel uh, uh, lawyer that represented Black Bell Citizens against the landfill when they sued citizens for $30 million for speaking up. Slap suits scare people. Slap suits when you don't know any better scare people. They sued four individuals in Uniontown, B and E, Esther Calhoun, and the two sisters that's on the story that you shared. They sued them for thirty million dollars for speaking up against it. Mm -hmm. They sued them for that. That scared. They used to have meetings where you couldn't even get in the room, but when they hit them with that thirty million slap suit, Gentlemen. what everybody did disappeared yeah, sure. because I don't have thirty million dollars, and they didn't understand mm -hmm. that there were resources out there that would help them fight them, and then. Once it happened, they had already lost the momentum that is necessary. Also, going back to what she said, absolutely. The uh, the landfill reported last year that they had five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, they had five hundred thousand tons that had come to to Uniontown with trash from thirty three states. Okay, and so at the county commissioner meeting, they announced uh, the, the the chairman now that only uh, that they were going to be receiving three hundred thirty thousand. So Mr. Eaton brought up and said, "Hey, what happened to the other two hundred <laughs> Thousand uh, uh, tons because according to uh, according to ADM report as well as the the report that came from the landfill that they brought they already got five hundred thousand in the first quarter and so where's the two hundred thousand you remember they get a dollar ton the state get a dollar ton so that's two hundred thousand dollars that is missing where is it mm -hmm. well when you only got two commissioners that's asking those questions and you got three who is getting those brown envelopes well how far do you think it's gonna go? And the people that control it, this is one of the reasons why we district is, is important. The people that are controlling are not going to do the draw, the draw, the uh, draw, redrawing of the lines. Why? Because Marion area lost people. Uniontown gained, which means that Uniontown would get another seat on the commission and Marion would lose, which would shift the power structure in, in the Perry County Commission. You're not going to have people to do that. But it goes back to this. When you are talking about politics, and going back to Larry question at the beginning, when you talk about politics in the black belt, people don't understand it. And so because, Let me tell you why. because they because they don't show up, one, they don't show up. But like Jaden said, it's a whole article, and I shared this many times, I share it again. That was in the same amount of report about that girl named Nikki. And and one of the things that she wrote about is a problem throughout it. And throughout in, in, in North Alabama, Marshall and Decap County, the home of our attorney general. They don't come to their meetings either. It's a problem. They only show up when mess happens. This is in the white community. This is in the black community because they trust the people whom they elect. But the difference, like they did up in Marshall County, I can tell you. But the difference is when them jokers start, start cutting up, it's time for you to go okay, home. And they got rid of them. That's how Phil yeah. Sims became the 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 yeah. um yeah. the uh the sheriff. He became, I'm gonna let you get in there, Rob. He became the sheriff. <laughs> he became the sheriff because 
people, people got fed up and they voted out a long-term share because the people said enough is enough. When they, when, when they start bringing dope through the front door and they were putting it on Instagram, mm. it was time for them to go. And his friends voted him out. So it can happen. But the, like you said, though, which I agree that for, the people got to get tired. And they're not going to get tired if they're getting a the haircut. <laughs> Why do we have to get tired? Let me tell you, I believe in surveys. Living in the models. When I, when I went to vote, I stood outside the parking lot 45 minutes because I wanted to see the Democrats. Okay. As a culture, white people teach their kids to vote young. When I saw, when I looked at the young people that come through there, I saw more young 18 year old white kids. They, they teach themselves generational wealth, meaning that if they got a business, they teach their kids those business. So when it comes up and you get to the point where you have to, to assemble or you have to protest, they already know the process. The reason that we are right here right now, because we're not teaching our children when they five and six, the importance of voting. Thank you for putting that online. Because when you put that, that, that thing online, those are things for your Christmas party, for people to vote. That's how we educate ourselves. That's how we educate our youth. Because when, it, when we, we talking about when you get mad, don't wait till you get mad. You should, you should be equipped with the information that you need to do to process anyway. And the thing is, our problem right here, our problem right here is that when you got little John and, and little Bob at the house, then you, they, they set me up playing with them damn video games and you're buying them Jordan, but you're not teaching the fundamentals of life. So when they grow up, they can be the next generation, be ready for whatever comes this way. But That's you, our issue. But we had weekly readers back in the day. Mm -hmm. The readers, you remember weekly sure, readers? Yeah, they ain't got yeah. no more. You yeah. remember they used to, I used to look forward yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. you remember do, every year during the election year, mm -hmm. we get the people scratching in. We we were the featured school for weekly reader to the point to where Miss Skipper, I'm gonna tell you something later. Miss Skipper, <laughs> Skipper used to run the cafeteria. Because we became the weekly reader school, mm -hmm. they gave us the half of me. They had weekly, I'm, I'm, weekly <laughs> reader. Weekly read, we became the school and they presented up with half of me if you didn't know the exam. Yeah. And so y'all got jealous. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. Because they put it in the front page of the Greenboro Wyman. That was the Greenboro Wyman were racist. Remember, they used to put, oh, they used to put, they used to put West Campus stuff at, uh, above the fold. And they used to put East Campus stuff at the bottom, but this hat. We got on the front door. So black children didn't have to be. Who did you? And so when we got when we got on that front door, it was happy. Had it came up to the board meeting. This is when Dan uh, brother was. I remember I was there. I was the child. See, I was involved in politics because I used to get in trouble. Yeah, you say that. So I stayed you, in trouble. You the assistant secretary. You didn't know. Yeah, and That's I, 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 used, I used to know everything. And you still know to the day. But the point of it, y'all school got jet, and then when y'all got so technically, mm -hmm. you got it after East Campus. <laughs> well, let me just tell you a secret. What's the secret? Kim learned at the West Campus. Then she came to East Campus. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an amen? Look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't like the West Campus. <laughs> All right. Me either. <laughs> Uh, now, now I would say this though, Larry. I usually disagree with Portia just our principle, uh -huh. but when she brought up about they used to serve Happy Meals and she had food, she remembered that one. Though. <laughs> she said she. Down the But I would say this though, shout out to the uh the, the lunchroom workers that we had when I was in school, cause baby. Well that right. food, listen, the, I'm telling y'all, I've seen a picture. I seen a picture where they showed a lady holding that uh tray. She's holding that tray of them uh the rectangle uh pieces. What what 
Why is he with that corn? Yeah, listen. Oh, man. <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> but but back back to what we said right what we were talking about the good thing about it is first of all i'm, I'm robert Tav fired up tonight i'm glad it, i'm glad Oh man, I uh oh uh, 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 oh. no. I, I, no, I think the biggest don't part give me no bad with it. We we are too trusting. Exactly. We're, we're too agree. trusting and too forgiving in our community. I agree. We let a lot of stuff slide. Somebody say they can do something bad, you know it bad. Nope. You speak up about it, they say I'm sorry you did. Black people mm -hmm. didn't even see the power during the pandemic. When black people start posting. Uh, when 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 those uh, businesses remember, mm -hmm. and black folks like they start pointing out, hey, we need to protest this bit. What mm -hmm. those business start doing? Change it quick. Blackout day. Yep. We Change we're gonna have seventy five percent yep. off. Mm -hmm. And so black people were like, oh sure, and they kind of died down, but they didn't see the power in what was happening. Those companies, you're talking about, we have a one point six trillion dollars. Give me for spending trillion dollar buying in a year. In one year, black people spend one point six trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. But, but and, they, black and they and these companies see that and they are scared of black people. That's what the thing we don't understand our power, even though Kanye be saying some cuckoo for cocoa for mm -hmm. <laughs> But one of the things that he is saying is that is true when we band together, APAC, the American is Republic of Fast Committee. Is a lobbying group that focuses on strengthening the United States and Israel relationship. When I used to go to DC all the time, that's who used to send me. That's when I woke up. I woke up and I said, This is how they get stuff done. Every senator, every congressperson. I remember when we went, did a DC visit. I had to wait outside. This is the truth. Then when Arthur Day was in office, I had to wait outside. When eight, when I won SJ president at Max, APEC brought me up to the DC. They opened the front door. He was, he had, he, uh, Senator Shelby had people in uniform sitting in the lobby, but because we had that APEC badge on, we walked straight to the back. That's the power that they have brought into Washington, D.C. They are the number two lobbying uh, thing in the world. A AARP number one, APEC number two. The United States sends $18 billion. They use 60% of that money on defense. So you're not going to tell me what what the power can happen when we do organize do i like the naacp no do i like urban league no but the black leaders that they meet with that's who get to the table but when they get to the table they're cowards they the ball. and and they know that they have taken money in other places mm -hmm. so they don't listen to what they say they just sit there and smile take some pictures and we don't see the results of it because they already know we have to even though it sucks we're going to have to find a way to organize ourselves so we can be able to develop the skill. Do all them Jews get along? No. No. But, but point. Today, you got the day before, you got different one, but they know the power that APEC possess. They work together for the common good. And, well, and the common good is what? To protect yeah. Israel. But Portia, though, this is the yeah. thing. Yeah. But you just hit, you just hit something. That, that happened on the federal level, like national level. But the same thing happened on the state level and the county level here. Where people know that folks then took money yeah. and they they him they and then this is the thing, like what Portia said, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You got people that we keep, and then these people lie to our face, and we say that they lie to our face, and they keep going on for their own self-interest. And we look at it, you said uh Bobby Singleton and and uh Albert Turner, they worked that deal up so that Arrowhead can come to Union Town. Did they make and say put anything parameters in there that union town benefit from that no. now these people from where we from will let these people come in and make all of this money think about it i it's a 17 hour drive from me to up to new york and i got trash that coming from new york state down to union town think about that that they're making money off of the, from from those other states to take that trash in the city of union town don't get a dime they get the hair problems.
But we got people that we keep electing, and we and I know we said it over and over. But when it come down time to vote, we go right in that voting booth. Oh, that my cousin, or he married this person. I know we went to school together. Uh, he need to get the hell out of there. And I'm dead serious on that because guess what? We already in Hale County. And, and, and watch this. And, and like Mayor Rosell said earlier, I know he eating his cake right now, but I'm about to bring him in here. But he said this earlier. He, <clears throat> when you are about accountability, this is why they don't like Portia. I'm going to tell you why they don't like Portia. Well, I, I can tell you why I don't like Portia, but I'm going to tell you why they don't like Portia. They don't like Portia because they know Portia, they can't control her with trying to manipulate her with giving her stuff on the side. And Portia is transparent. They don't like that. They want people that they can go to and be like, hey, hey, hey you, you, you want a little something? get you a little something now we can work this out to get you a little something that's how they that's how they roll when they know they can't control you then they 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 try to paint you as a problem and this is the funny thing i i'm gonna say this and she didn't say it and we ain't talk about it but her campaign when she was running for office it's people that know portia know what she did know how she's been in the community still went in there and told people to vote against her because they are they are feeding the beast but then when you get people in leadership like uh, Mayor Rosell, who I want him to make a uh, make an announcement on what he got going on. Um, and he talked about it a little bit before we started the live. But when you have leadership that get in place and start making things happen, people start will start attacking you. But the whole thing is, as leaders, you can't be afraid to go ask for help and the help that you see that you need. So, Mayor Rosell, I just wanted to just uh, throw you throw the ball in your court and 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 uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for having me. It's, it has been a long uh, two years, but nonetheless, it has been well worth the journey. Uh, one of the things that people have to understand, uh, and I didn't understand it, military is one thing, but politics is something totally, it's a whole totally different animal. Uh, you have to handle people with kick gloves, certain things you can't say. As well as when the military, you can say what you need to say and, and be on about your business. But in the civilian world, you are held at a different standard, so to speak. But um, one of the things, uh, if I can just say that Akron is on the move, Akron is on the map, Akron is doing the things in which we said we were going to do in the beginning. And I, I have some things here, I just want to just go over kind of quickly. Uh, some of the things that we talked about, uh, one of the things I talked about is accountability and effective leadership during the campaign. And I told the people that we can't build on a perpetual lie. Uh, you would not be surprised as to how many people did not want us to investigate the misappropriation of funds that took place in our community, but not understanding the ramification behind not investigating. Uh, by by doing so, we have placed ourselves in a position where not only people trust us on the state level, but on the national level. And the last time I checked, there's not a state in the United States that print money other than the federal government. So if you are not trusted by the federal side, your state senate, your national senators and your congressmen and congresswomen, how can you expect to get the fundings to trickle down on the state level? So they want people to be accountable. You have to do budgets. You have to do audits. We did a forensic audit. We had the state to come in to, to find those things that have been overlooked. And I want to ask, did you have to pay for that? No, they didn't. They and how, 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 how did you do, how did you find out that you didn't have to pay for that audit? Well, you asked. I sent an email to just about everybody and God. <laughs> so it made it so no one could ignore it and sweep it under the rug. So everybody on all levels were, our, were identified in that email. So if someone really thought, well, maybe we can just overlook this, then when they began to look at the banking records and you know when they seen that our library account 
was this big. Mm -hmm. And the general funds account was this big. That's a problem, especially if the, if the library has been closed or dormant for years. So you have to say that's, that, that's not enough. That, and that kind of money coming into the library to have statements this thick. So um, once they dug a little deeper and find out what was going on and, and they've made their uh, determination that, yeah, fraud had taken place and they're still, the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, so that's that's one of the great things is that's going on. It, it, one of the the newest discoveries or the newest things that we have going on in Africa. Let me kind of pull it back. We have the keys and the deeds have been signed and recorded in the Hale County Probate to the old African Elementary School. Yeah. 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 So the school board was more than more than willing to, to do this for us. It took a long time. We had some things dealing with the attorney. And once everybody got on the same page, it was a real easy school transition. But we could have been had it. But the thing of it is, you have to ask. Mm -hmm. We don't receive because we don't ask. Yeah, right, right. So when I went there and told the school board what we wanted and what why we wanted what we wanted, it didn't cost us anything. They turned it over to us. Um, to date, uh, when we took over Akron, Akron was a half a million dollars in debt. Well, I'm here to report that a half a million dollar debt has been forgiven. So the town of Akron is debt free. Back in February, we were asked for a shelf life project, and, and I gave them a number of $380,000. Well, they came around and gave us a little over five million. <laughs> so these are the types of things that despite the hatred, despite of the you know the, the personal attacks and the slanderings that goes on that I deal with, I, and I just try to turn the deaf ear to it and I tell people, okay, that's okay, just keep talking. But at the same time, keep watching. Because the more you do, the more God continues to bless us. So we're gonna move forward. I thank my council members because they are the ones that allow me to make these things happen. They work with me. They are informed. They know what's going on. Things are transparent. So when I bring something to them, they know I'm not bringing foolishness. They know that I'm bringing something that is going to help not just today, but the future. Mm -hmm. And so that's the important thing is having a staff and having members in your municipal government that gets it, that knows where we're going, that knows that we have a plan to execute. And I think I have established that with them by the things that they have seen happen. Blacks have been in charge in, in Akron for 30 some years, since 1980. Mm -hmm. There's no way our community should look the way it look. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't go up under the old, well, the day. Mm -hmm. They did this, they did that. Okay, well, who is that? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been in charge for the, since 1980. Who, who are they? Are we now the day? Yeah. You know, so being transparent coming to cause, and I don't have a problem with that, you know, because at the end of the day, along, as long as the good Lord allows me to wake up and put my feet flat on the ground, they might as well watch out and get used to it because I'm coming. Yeah. Oh, he so, did, yeah, he did that Dion reference right there. I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Porsche. My question to you, uh, Mayor Rosell, you said that uh, there was a three hundred thousand uh, dollar debt that had not been paid back to the federal government, and that they end up giving you five million. Do you think it was because you went forward with the action of prosecution for what had taken place in the city? I know it is. <laughs> if we didn't have any financials. If, uh... When we went in, there was not a budget that took place since 2013. So there was no accountability. There was no reference to where the money is coming in. There was no audit, excuse me. There was no audit done since 2013. So, you know, a lot of people, they, they feel some kind of way because, like I said, people that were in office or family members or whoever, or noted people in the community, and I don't have anything against those people. It's not personal for me. I wasn't here. But the fact still remains what it is that we have to undertake. 
The fact still remains that I had to go down to ADM, a 77 page document to show what took place. And I wasn't even here. But as well as to this, to show them what we have in place to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And I had five days to provide this 77 page document or the funding that we received was gonna to go to the city itself. So, you know, people don't understand the amount of pressure. They didn't ask the previous administration to provide this information. They didn't ask the council members to provide this information. They said, man, we need you to provide this information. And if we don't have this by this date, these funds are gonna to go to the city itself. So that's a lot of pressure being up all around the clock trying to pull things together and, and get certain water testings and show where we have water loss and show that our sewer systems are not working. So we have a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving people that help bring this information together for us in a small amount of time that we had to do. So Mayor, I know you were very well compensated for all of the work that you did. If you don't mind, you can if you let the people know how much you get paid to be the mayor of Akron, Alabama. With, uh, and, and, and I'm bringing I'm bringing this up for a reason, because you just ain't the thing that you was, you was elected mayor two years ago. You, you took took the seat and you you went in. Right. Yeah. One of the key things that people don't aren't realizing is you going in and doing that audit, that forensic audit. Help reset that people see that you are credible as a city. Because like you said, they gave they the same thing happened in Uniontown. Uniontown got some debt forgiven because they went in and they started working to identify balancing their books. But can you let the people know? Because you know, all of that stuff in five days, seven, seven pages, I know you've been handsomely compensated. Make good money. Mate, I'm talking about <laughs> mate. Because the folk, you know, because some people can say, oh, you stealing and all this, but I just want people to know. Well, let me, let me explain this. Um, it's funny that you say this because I was just looking at an offer letter that I had prior to me coming to Apple. Uh, I was making, a, you know, I was scheduled to make $160,000 a year working in Atlanta for Homeland Security. And my mother re reminded me, I, would need, I didn't even get a chance to get the first check. And she said, well, baby, you know what you promised God you would do if such and such and such and such. So I wound up coming over here taking this job. So being the mayor of Akron, I would say I'm probably the lowest paid mayor in the state of Alabama. So I make $275 a month. So no, 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 $275 a month. So, so not per meeting, per month. So if I round up. That's sixty two hundred dollars you've been compensated as mayor in the two years you've been able to accomplish all of the things that you talked about. Uh, not quite, because the first year and a half I didn't take this out. No, I'm, I'm just saying what what would have been. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm that's rounding up the sixty two hundred. Yeah. So let me ask you a question: Are right? you full time or are you part time? This is a part time position, but I've been working six and a half to eight days a week. So Portia, let's let's do that. He get paid a baconator uh meal a day. No, no they took that eleven dollars. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Larry, a son of a baconator. <laughs> he get the son of a baconator. Ain't no Greensboro, won't you? Well, Mildville won't you? So, so we want to know: um, Do you have any ambition as far as doing something for Hale County 
as a whole to where the people of Hale County can benefit from. Because it seems like since you've been an accurate, you've done an outstanding job. Everything that you said that you <coughs> would do when you came on the show, you have started doing it. And beyond. Let the young family. <laughs> 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 I somehow didn't know. So. Uh, actually, I, it has come to me it's been a question that has been given me more than once. Uh, it's not something that I really have given any, a lot of thought and prayer and consideration. Um, it's not something that I'm ruling out. However, uh, I do have a job to complete in Akron. I do have things that needs, still needs to be done. And um, we just have to pray and see how things are gonna go. Um, and, if, and if there's someone that is willing to step up and to ensure that Akron doesn't lose. That's the bottom line. But in this type of position, people are looking for people that they can control. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a situation where you don't have nothing to lose and you stand, as they say, 10 toes down and people are, know that they can't move you with this and that and the third, we need to have people that are shelf ready that can step up can handle it under pressure, is not going to bend and fold um, because of what people say. People say all kinds of things about me in the streets, whatever the case may be, but at the end of the day, you know, I sleep good at night because they can keep talking. They don't pay none of my bills. They don't hold the keys to my breathing. They don't have the keys to how many days I live or whatever. They don't have my birthday. They can't eat. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> In our office, yes. yes. Instead of trying to move them somewhere else, what about apprenticeship? Because if you've done so well there, if there are some teenagers you can get from the high school, from Greensboro High School, somewhere else, and maybe partner with the school system and they work with you, if they do them a filing paperwork or something, see how, give them the blueprint, give them, give them the answer so that we can develop the next generation of, of mayors and leaders. See, now you're in my business. So I didn't say that part. So I'm glad that you brought that up. That is something that the council and I have discussed about um, coming into 2023 to establishing a junior council, junior mayor program where we can kind of introduce our children to politics so they can understand it, so they can go to these meetings with us so they can see how this thing works behind the scenes. And not only that, uh, connecting with the mayors of the local area that like you got the Greensboro and uh, uh, that needs the leadership because training is about exposing yourself to somebody that's doing it to give you an idea, a model unit because if you're doing so much in Akron, Greensboro need that same leadership and the problem is people hate to know they don't want nobody to know that they don't know yeah. and that's the bad what? part when you get into that position, you need to be able to expose yourself and bring in some fresh ideas. You ain't got five million dollars in Africa. Africa, what? How many? How many? How many? How many? You got five million to fix that sewage system with 300 people. But, but Sean, though, I'm, I'm gonna say this, right. Has that have you ever been have you ever been scared to ask a question about something you ain't know? No, I talked to you. No, but what my, my, my point is, right? You got to want to get better. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, if I see somebody doing something that, that I could benefit from, mm -hmm. hey, 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 can I connect? Yeah. And, and, and get out your done feelings, get out your mm -hmm. ego. Cause it should be about what's the best on the like what's the best end state. Like we're talking on what's the end state. The end state is that we get better as a community. Because we all can win. And the problem is, I ain't got to compete with you because right. you can't outdo me doing me. Right. So why I got to compete with you? But if I see something that I can put in my tool bag, I'm still going to try to get it. And that's the thing. We got to require the people that we elect that you got to be coachable. Yep. You know? And that's the thing. We got to prime example. Robert called me about a shirt that his daughter created. He, he just called me about a shirt. And I pitched him mm -hmm. an idea. I was sitting here, I pitched the mayor idea. He was sitting here and he just happened to tell me. I mean, you gotta share knowledge is powerful. Yeah. And holding it in does nobody no good. 
You just said something that's very important I like to highlight. You know, myself and two of my council members, we're the only certified municipal officials in Hale County. Wow. We're the first and only to have done it for Akron since Akron existed. And this program been around since the early 90s. So an 18 month program we completed in nine months. And these council members went with me everywhere I went. They went to training, they went to conferences, they did stuff online. So you, you don't expect to go to a neurosurgeon if that person don't have that MD and that specialty behind it, name, right? right? So why are you allowing people to be in these positions that are unqualified just because you know them and you like them? That is the problem that we as a people need to get out of. Mm. If you don't have a person that is a dentist that has a qualification, I'm sure you're not going to have them playing in your mind. <laughs> are you going to trust somebody that can make a decision for your well-being, the laws for the next 10, 15, 20 years, if they don't understand the laws and can't break this thing down? Yes, ma'am. Let me answer this question. Because we all keep saying these people don't know. You go to retreats and the little things that they have to go to, which they go to every year, right? Yes, ma'am. So what are they doing when they go in there? They don't teach them these things? That's what I'm saying. They don't go to the classes. You all know as conferences. They go to the conferences, but they how long they in the conference is a different thing. Let me hear y'all that. Let me hear y'all that. One thing about us. When you don't know, you don't know what to ask. But when the people around you, Bertel, don't know, you can pretend like you do something. That's why a lot of people don't go to these conferences because it'll reveal that you really not as smart as you pretend to be. A, a lot of preachers around him don't know a whole lot. I'm talking to some preachers. They don't go to no conferences. But if they never think they're the best thing on this side of hell, get with it. They ain't going to do no better. And you got a lot of people that are elected, that there are a lot of elected officials the same way. They're not going to go because we think they already know because they're in the position to really, they don't know no more than we know. And then they go on free vacation. It's true. It's true. But the fact of the matter is, the issue is, and, and, and to Robert, you know, I'm not going to glean off him because I'm gleaning off him. That just let him know that I'm not as smart as him. And I don't want you to know I'm not as smart as you. Yeah. So I'm not going to glean, even though you, you got information that can help me, help my situation better. I'm not going to come to you because I'm, I'm going to be embarrassed that you know I'm not there yet. Well, you know who you'll go to. Somebody else that don't somebody know. Somebody great. Yeah. Mm. The worst speaker for us too is that little Ryan. Yeah. You'll go to somebody great. Yes, Ms. Jones. So, so, I'm here in your county, okay? And so, I'm going to ask you about Has the mayor here tried to reach out to you? Uh, Mr. Washington, uh, I, I, I have uh, Excuse me. I don't mean the mayor. Excuse me. The probate judge. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so let me you know, say something right quick. Let me say something. Yeah. He was in the army. He was in the army. We'll be in the Navy. Hey, so let me say something. Y'all are So let me say this right here. That question, that question that Miss Miss Hill Jones just just asked. Try your best to answer it as truthful. As you possibly <laughs> because some of us know, dude, he got a cowboy shirt on. How you gonna answer this? <laughs> I don't hold it again. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna say this before I actually ran, I reached out to everyone in the, the county, all of the judges and different ones, because I believe before you go playing in people's backyards, they need to know who you are why you're here and what it is that you're planning to do. Uh, so I made myself known to everyone. I was received well. Um, I believe they put me in a position and connected with people so that I could let my voice be heard. I was even connected with Miss Portia, so she gave me a platform to actually to speak out to my social media audience and the rest, I went door to door. So to answer your question, I have been in communication with the officials here in Hale County. I have not been objected to in any way, but I have been 
in connection and contact with the, the county uh, administration. Did you make any progress with them? Yeah. Did you make any progress with them? Well, I'm glad you said that. Um, with the in the last couple of weeks, we had a tornado. I think most of you all know down on Block Eight in Oak Ridge Road, and it was phenomenal. My county officials came through. Uh, the the uh, county commissioners they came and brought the heavy duty equipment. They got the, the things moving, got stuff off of people's houses, and it's an ongoing process with the Hale County Disaster Relief that have um, made, it, made it headquarters in Akron to provide uh, clothing, whatever types of things that the people in my community need. Even though they're outside of my city limits, it's still in Akron because the city limits is not extended out yet, but it will be to include them in and to bring them in. And I just love the way how things came together in a rather quick fashion. And everyone in the county was hands on that. I didn't have to ask once, they and some people were already. They did a good photo shoot. They did a good photo shoot. They, 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 they don't get together to be on the news and do a good photo shoot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We, 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 uh, we came they together and, and, and we got things done. So I, I mean, I can't, I can't be uh, <laughs> even more happy on what they did for our community. Yeah, that's so. what they did. That. Okay. In other words, why does it have to be a, 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 a disaster for us to come together? You know, 9 11, we, we, the country was divided, but 9 11, we both came together for a little while. Then we went back to our own little separate ways. The next major, you know, uh, catastrophe, we come back together. Why it take something catastrophic for us to come together? All right. That's a big question. People are people. Because we live in the we tribal. Reaction. We're tribal. Like I, I'm just, I'm, I'm using this for an instance, right? So, being deployed in Iraq, 31 months, right? My second deployment, I was embedded on our, um, I was on what we call a military transition team, a MIT team, and it was 10 Americans embedded into a 500 Iraqi Army battalion. We lived away from everybody else, so we was just 10 Americans out on our own with Iraqis. And the Iraqi, when you're dealing with in, in the Middle East, you have the Sunni and the Shia and the Muslims. And it's 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 almost like think about like old Jim Crow, like it was a, a, a divide because that's a big uh, internal battle. But they're tribal. They're not they don't have a sense of nationality like we have in America. They're loyal to their tribe. We are tribal people. We we got the black tribe. We got white. We got we have so many different people that we have our loyalty to. <laughs> yeah, Wars Alley. Y'all in like Baptist Hill. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But with that, right? We just have to, as culturally, we got to start teaching people that, that hey, look, we should come together and then create a coalition so we know who to leverage when we need to leverage them to get what we need. And I think the term or the point that we need to talk about a lot is leverage. We talk leverage a lot. I talk leverage a lot, but I don't think we really understand it. And leverage is not I'm using you. It's that I know who to talk to when I need to, to get what I need to get done. I'm going to say this, but I got to go. Uh -huh. The whole thing is, you got to have somebody there that can get a seat at the table. Yep. yep. And if you're not sitting, when uh, I go to cheer conference every year, they let us sit at any table. They said, pick a table. I go to the table with the richest people there. I want to be the brokenest person at the table because you can't tell me no better if you ain't doing no better than me. Amen. So I'm going to the person that can lead me. I need to know what you're doing. So the problem is we're electing people that don't know how to get to the table. If you can't sit to the table, you can't write me nothing new. You got. I got to be able to get to your table. If you offer financial literacy, I gotta get to that table because if I'm in debt and I don't know how to get out, all I'm gonna do is be like a dog chasing my tail. I, I gotta get to the table for you to tell me. And then when you get to the table, you got to be coachable. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can't be, oh, well, I already know this. I know that I know this. I um that uh -huh person. You got to be a, a sponge soaking mm -hmm. it all in. And did you add what you said? We got to stop waiting till we get sick and tired. 
we wait till we get sick and tired. When you get sick, you won't do nothing. You complain. When you get tired, you complain and you won't do nothing. But when you get sick and tired, that's that's why energy comes in and we start, you know, organizing. Why but, we got to yeah? But, but <laughs> why we got to wait till we get sick and tired? Why we just can't be, you know, instead of being uh, reactive all the time, why can't we just train? Well, Robert, that's what she that's what she's saying, uh, Robert, what, what you're what you're alluding to. And and what he said, I even with the people that I named that I know are doing wrong, they are they are all eating from the same table. This is our problem in the black belt. Everybody is eating from the same table. It's the same. That's why certain people are able to do certain things in our community, uh, like give a road away in hell county because they are eating from that particular table and, and, so, and so what sean is saying is that if i this is what i see that's why you need to read the book the notice about and andrew i see i see them eating from this table and i see that table is only limited to a certain door so i'm not going to go to that table i'm going to go around and go to another table and get the results that i'm looking for for our community our problem is we're electing people who just want to be at that particular table because they've never been exposed to what you just said. They don't know how to leverage outside of the people in the table because they see the people that's eating at that table as being the, the gatekeeper, not knowing that they can create their own way. And these are the same people that sit in there and say that God can open up the windows of heaven and put us out of blessing. And God, you know, can do this and he can do the impossible. But yet you're going in door that he's no longer in. And I think that that's important for us to say and, and important for what you say. We have to. I can work with anybody, even though I know what they are doing. They do well, have and, and they do have something that I need when I need it. And I can I, and they do it. I, trust me, I have got them to do certain things, but then I move the heck on because what I asked you is within your job description. And I'm not asking you to do anything outside of your job description. One, because I don't want you to come back to me. And two, I don't yes, I don't want you to ask for a favor, but I ask you for it and I move on. I'm not, I'm not there to stay. I don't want to go to your house for dinner. I don't want to do those particular things. I want you to do what your job is, is, is there to do. So I can do something else greater. And I think that that's the problem that we have in our community. When they don't like somebody or like a person that's in office, then they are not willing to work with anybody and your community suffers mm -hmm. because of that. Because you don't like this particular person, not looking at that person as a resource. Well, I, I think we got to in the dams in our culture and community. What do you mean? Uh, what's the purpose of a dam? Stop. Stop. Okay. Stop the flow of things. That's why we're dealing with this damn racism and this damn classism and this damn sexism and all of these different isms. Because we got to be in the damn city. And the damn stop things from flowing. And, and 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 that's the main issue. And oftentimes we know who the dams are, but we don't want to tear them down. When you tear the dams down, everything ain't gonna flow like it's supposed to flow. You sound like a preacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the classism, the classism exists. Why, why don't we discuss that in our community? Why would you and I have had that conversation before? I'm in a class right now dealing with classism. And, 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 and it is real on so many. And I never saw it like that until I got to my job today dealing with classes. This with, with women. Women, especially black women, y'all run times. But, but, <laughs> but, but y'all on the class with, y'all on the same level with animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Black women and children, y'all, y'all on the bottom of the, of the list. But, but, but the women stop doing, and they gonna get done. But even us as black men, we have classes. We have classes against our own women in the church. Woo! You know, ain't no woman coming to the pulpit. She can preach from the floor to come to the pulpit. You know, women can't do this, but the women pay the most of the money in the church. Same way in the community. We, you know, black, we do it to ourselves and don't even realize it. My you just lost some of your privilege. <laughs> oh, that ain't real. <laughs> you know, I say, keep talking. I go. <laughs> 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 
But 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 you know, but we don't think we don't think from that perspective, but it is so real within our own black community how we treat black females. But a black female stop doing it, and then won't get done. And that's just the reality of, of life itself. But black people, we're prejudiced against one another. Well, we ain't prejudiced, but we we use the same classism that that, that, that the chart that was placed against us, we use against our own people. Yes. Mm-hmm. And don't even realize. And, and, and that's the sad part about it. That's, that's the sad part about it. But the Jesus took those things. But we're going to start picking those things. Mm. I just have a couple of things just wanted to, to also mention that we did get approved for a storm shelter. Um, mm-hmm. But that's not going to be enough. And so we're going to have to push this agenda forward, get past the red tape, get past the bureaucracy, and get with the EMA director, get with the officials in Hale County, because that's not going to be enough for these places. We're in Tornado out. So it's not about when uh, or if another one is going to strike. It's a win. And so, you know, I'm about sick and tired of having all these meetings and meetings. Everybody want to meet and want to do this and nothing's getting accomplished, nothing getting done. We're just meeting and sit around and talk about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And then when you look at, you know, you have FEMA, they hold up so much of the process. You know, by the time they approve this, they send it back down and wait on somebody else to sign off this another 10 days or two weeks. And by the time they get corrected and go back up, so we have to start getting involved in the process to kind of shorten this process so that it doesn't take so long for the end product to get back to our communities. Uh, one thing I will point out, we have a couple of things going on in Akron, but this is extended out for Hale County. Yes, yeah, what we're going to do for Hale County. Coming up next month in January, we have NACA coming to Akron, and we have Home Free USA. So there's two different organizations. NAPA is going to be talking about getting yourselves affordable housing. Listen, I have a double wide, so understand when I say what I'm saying is coming from a place of knowledge. Anything that has a VIN is considered a vehicle. It depreciates. It's a liability. It's not an asset. We got too many people in this county that have trailers. I have another organization that's coming to help people get their financial things in order because we deserve better. When you know better, you do better. Hey. It's amazing how the financial in- industries have set us up for failure. They'll give us a loan to buy a car and a trailer, but they won't give you a mortgage to buy a stick built house or to build from the ground up. You got to think about this thing. They will give you a $90,000 mortgage to buy something that is going to depreciate and never hold its original value. But they won't give you $90,000 to go buy this house that's already there or give you $90,000 to build the house from the ground up. Got to understand the language that is being done. So these organizations that we're bringing into our communities are for you all. Whether you live in Akron, Grace, Russell, or whatever, when I put this information out, you all come. Come find out what Chase Bank and what Regions Bank and what all these PNC Bank, what all these different banks are trying to do to change a culture to get you qualified, to get your house built from the ground up. Don't go out there to, just because it's easy to go pick your house off the lot and then roll it out there and the next time they will come through and take it away. Let's do something that creates generational wealth. Traders are not going to get it. And I have one. So these are the things that we have coming online. I thank you all so much for having me on this show. Like I said, I, I promised Portia a long time ago before I started putting anything out. I was going to give it to you all first. I didn't even put it in the newspaper yet. So you all will always get it hot off the press as far as what we're doing. And, you know, as people said, you know, they told us we weren't going to be able to get to school. There's people that said, still saying it now. But hey, I have the keys and the deeds. So, that's that. I said you proved them wrong. But I, so, she said, what you going to do with this? So, if I'm not mistaken, I remember you saying, or someone saying something about, 
something about um, not necessarily rezoning, but I'm asking you though, is there a way that we can rezone Akron to extend into Sawyerville so that we can have some representation as well? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Atomic bomb. You sure you want me to answer that question? <laughs> so all the unincorporated areas, and, and this is public knowledge, falls up under the county seat. So when we're talking about extending lines, when we're talking about uh, annexations, can it be done? Absolutely. Because the next major city between Akron and Sawyerville Sawyer is Greensboro. So if Greensboro don't want to come this way, it's highly plausible that Akron could come that way. However, that is a fight because when you give up territory, it's like playing the game. Uh, what was that game? Not Monopoly. It's Monopoly, but it was another game. It was a whisk or it was a, it was like a war game when you're taking over territory. It's, uh, Risk, that's it, thank you. So when you start getting into those dynamics, now you have to get other people outside involved. And if they're gonna have a buy-in, then you have certain landowners that owns more than, let's say, 100 acres, but they pay the same amount in taxes as you do with a 85 by 175 foot lot. So when you have these people have been paying very little and they don't even live in this county. You have a lot of people that will fight that initiative because they pretty much get it there cheap. They ain't, they ain't paying their fair share of taxes. They don't want nobody talking about raising the tax limits. They don't want nobody talking about that. But it's not something that we're opposed to, but we're trying to get certain things done before we can make certain moves. And then certain things I won't say because if you tell your left hand what your right hand is doing, they're going to try to block you. Oh, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. And that is what's been going on in the community of Akron. We've had some infiltrators since I've been in office. No quicker than we say something, it's held and somebody on the phone talking about it in the county level. And these are things that we spoke of in the executive session. Needless to say, we had to get rid of those people. So you ask, what do we plan on doing with the school? There's some things I can't say, but it's going to be a municipal staple. All of our organizations, the libraries, senior citizens, um, city hall, those things are going to go inside of the school. Um, but the school is too big for just that. So we do have a, a lot of things that we're looking at. We do have some other entities outside of the county that want to come here. And they're going to take a tour. And they're going to do whatever renovations that need to be done. So, <laughs> again, there's certain things I cannot say. <clears throat> Robert. <laughs> but stay tuned. I promise you, 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 won't, you won't miss. Just keep watching. We have some exciting things coming. And it's going to not only benefit Akron, but it's going to benefit the county as a whole. Hey, we just want to, like, like seriously, this has been, first of all, I thank uh, Mayor Rosell for coming on, sharing, but I also thank everybody for coming out. Uh, this is something you guys get to see how we are, like, seriously, behind the scene. Um, but also, you see that the passion that we all speak from and what we're about, we're really about moving the community forward. Um, and as far as with the Black Belt experience, as a, as a show or whatever, you know, we just try to make sure that we assess situations, we inform, we educate, and we enable the community to continue to work for. That's a lot, there's a lot that we have here. And my thing is, I just don't want us to be exploited by others. We should exploit ourselves with the resources that we have. Um, and I'm just proud to be a resident, of, I mean, just a homegrown from the Black Belt. Um, and, you know, just wanna say what y'all, I know Larry had to go out, he been out all day, he, he going up to Anniston. Uh, he, he said he ain't sleep. I told him he ain't no spring chicken no more. Uh, but Duck, what you got going on this week? <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna go ahead on and say it this time. You know, Tab usually goes second or first, but I'm gonna go ahead on go. <laughs> he cooks. 
<laughs> he, see, he was fired up tonight, though. That's why I got him going last. Um, this week, I'm just getting myself ready for that. Uh, to enjoy the holidays. When I say enjoy the holidays, enjoy my family and my loved ones. That's about that. And I'll be wherever anybody needs me to be. That's about that. And I enjoyed you guys. I would say you people, but that's <laughs> I'm just joking with you. I enjoyed you guys, though, man. We appreciate y'all coming out. Yes, ma'am. Now, what you got going on? See, see, y'all saw Robert fired up tonight because he had his chef hat on, so he was already. He was already. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, I do not. I'm a private chef. So I just go to places. I go to different events. I go across the state and stuff. And I uh, I work at the hotels and people's houses because I preferably do small groups, like maybe 15 or below. I really hate doing big events because. I can't give a personal touch to 150 people. Yo, you know what you're doing? I appreciate you. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you what I saw. <laughs> let me tell you what I saw. Let me tell you what I saw when I was in the kitchen. He was in there mixing this stuff and laughing and they're like, no, nah, that's too much, that's too much. He in there just mixing it like, like that. And then he gonna tell me to taste it. It was all point out. The man's become nowhere. Nowhere, he just mixing. So first of all, I want to thank Rita and Tara and uh, Tanisha. Man, when I tell you some of them, my friends are not even, they come right on through. You know, and, my, and they might not come through when I'm ready for them, but they be, they be there at the midnight hour when it's most important. Uh, I didn't get a chance to thank Sean, but these came from the t-shirt shop. Miss Edwina, she had a little... Yeah, how's she gonna ask you who made them? It, it, it came hush out of my mouth. I want to, uh, the little young lady at Winter Smith, you know, uh, in the mob that the teacher gets spread. And I said, I want to do something for the boys, and I want you know, so we can have our own cup up here. And this girl, I gave her bare minimal, and at all over the place I am, this young lady always come through. When I tell you. You don't know the jewels you have in your community until you until you just get out of your way and go and talk to people because we have every asset we need in this community. Mm -hmm. In addition to Robert, I, I appreciate you because you know this is the first time all of us has been in the same place. I think you know all I met you before once. The only person that I know extensively is Doug. This is my second time seeing Larry. You know. And this is a brotherhood up here. Now, mind you, we fight. And I'm still upset with one of them. But when I tell you, it ain't that but love. But I love it, love my hand. I love it. 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 I um, one thing I want to say before I ask the question, don't stop talking about the black belt. Even though people say, you don't need him no more, Rob. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Don't do this, you know? <laughs> don't care. But, but you still talk about, there's no other show in the black belt like this one. And so you got to keep the conversation going because we don't want people to continue to, to tell our story. They can come on our show. You have people watching this show in so many different places that mm -hmm. will inbox me and talk to me. You guys got uh, local uh, uh, state celebrities following in that, <laughs> so that's a good thing. So I want to ask you guys, what uh, what do you think? Is, you know, Doug, this was your idea, and so what do you guys see this show going to, and what do you guys feel about doing what you do each week? Well, first I want to say this: we do have a YouTube page now. Okay. So we set up a YouTube page, um, and the first show we did was the the hot show from last week. I uploaded that one. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> but we'll be uploading these uh, just so you know we, people can go back. Uh, the thing is, I, I I would just say for me, I would see it as as far as continuing the growth, as using it as a a platform.
to educate the people. Come on in here. What you hiding out there for? Hey, so poor show. This is our show. This is our show. It was our idea. It was your idea. <laughs> oh man. I got nothing to say. <laughs> you know, for me, I uh, I said week after week, what are your thoughts week after week? You know, for first I thought when I got on the show that I I really didn't have nothing to bring. Oh, you and and so for me, where I see the show going, you know, I want to be a celebrity, so I want to be on TV. <laughs> and, and we're going and we're going to be there because everything I ask God for, he gives me abundantly. And these are the things, when I tell you, we don't have many male representation in the community, you know, and I can think of all of the, the great things that came out of this community, but most of them are female uh, led a dream. Right. And actually this was to push. <laughs> you know, because I when I came on the show a year ago, I had no idea. I, me and Portia been talking, and she said, log in this way. And I was like, why am I gonna log in that way? <laughs> then they said, you know, hey, <laughs> they go tab. I said, of Portia has a way of just putting you on the spot when you ain't even ready. But um, I think, you know, God keeps us all ready. We just, you know, we just wait an opportunity. And I appreciate this opportunity here. And I'm glad y'all, you know, you know, you guys love food. I, I love my friends. I love each and every one of you guys. One thing that I want to leave you with, I was like, you know, with mental illness, people, check on your family. Check on your friends. Don't just wait when you call them on the phone and they say, I'm doing okay. If you have to go and knock on a door, knock on a door because you don't know what person what, what's going behind their smile. Talk to people in this time of year, it is it is hard. Even if they are mean to you and, and uh talk to you like you're crazy, <laughs> you still keep doing it. Because that's what your heart's supposed to do. <laughs> Hey, I, I would say that Laramie, Laramie said that he enjoyed the night. I know he's traveling. Uh, we got some comments. Uh, and and uh, uh, Miss Dorothy, Dorothy Jones says she love you, love you guys way from Tucson, Arizona. She tunes in every week from Tucson, Arizona. So uh, I would just say for 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 us, and I'm speaking for me, but I know it's uh, it echoes across the host. We genuinely love the black belt, like genuinely love the black belt. Without question, and we we just want what's better. So, hey, so let me say this right. Last but not least, guess who got the toughest job up here? Week after week after week. Guess who was the most dedicated one up here? Week after week after week. Guess who put in the most time up here? Week after week after week. It's not me. It's Brother Shepherd. This show wouldn't be going on the way it is going. If we didn't put in the time, we got for week to do to do all his different researches. He tried to find ways to keep the show live. I mean, he put in a lot of time. A whole lot of time. He put a lot more time than me. Well, I ain't gonna tell me about no time. He put a lot more time. But uh, um, um, so we just want to thank him for coming in. I want you in because you know work to win on her campaign trail. Well, you know, a little bit before, I mean, we could have picked a better guy to come in and do this. And Portia, you trained him well. Yeah. <laughs> he do a good job. We can do a good job. I love him. He do a good job. Well, well, hey, listen. What? <laughs> listen. No, no, what they don't understand it. Go ahead. Jadrin is 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 a, a great writer and a great idea. Jadrin wanted to do a female beat in the black belt. And she said, I'm, we're gonna be searching for beat. We're gonna be searching for beat. And I said, well, we need to do a dude first. And she said, okay, let's see how it's gonna work. You know, she fall out with y'all every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting on my nerves. Did you hear what Duck said? <laughs> I ain't watching for two weeks. But that, that, the point of it is that every, every just like in the view, everybody has a character. But not so much a character that you're playing, but it's just what people feed 
Chapel. Like, Doug, you're the villain. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and that, and that, 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 that's what happened. And so I think, it, and it's a space for this show. It's a space for Shay Long's show. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, it's, it's a space for us to highlight the talent that we have in there. And that idea is coming. It's on coming. TV, it, it, it's coming. And, um, and, I, and I just wanted to say that publicly. That it is coming, it's gonna come a time to where you are gonna be able to click it up, click on your TV, not just because it's on YouTube, but on an app from Roku that you'll be able to pick up and watch everybody do their thing. And I think that, that we uh you guys, I want I don't want you to get discouraged based off people, you know. I don't watch the show. What's the point of the show? The point of the show for what it is, because even though you claim y'all don't watch. <laughs> You know what I mean? You watch. They watch it. And um and so and it because this is a space for it. So I don't want you guys to get discouraged. I want you to keep on going and bringing the people the information in the raw way that it happens because of the fact that's what we need. That's what we need. And so and we're starting to see look at Greensboro. You know, Greensboro, and this is just Portia Shepherd opinion since the show in 2020. You can see the difference in Greensboro just on the events. Men yeah. of Valley do their events. Yeah. Juneteenth was jumping. That Christmas parade was jumping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That shows you what can happen when communities start talking to each other. People are coming together. Mm -hmm. Things are happening. It's slow, but it's happening. And so to be along that, highlighting the good, acknowledging the bad, and coming up with the solutions, I want you to continue to do that. Well, Portia, I would say... <laughs> and I'm gonna speak. We don't care about what people. I've been honest with like, and I'm, I ain't saying that to be disrespectful. Not saying that to be disrespectful. But if you don't like an opinion or something, we welcome the, uh, you to voice your opinion. But that's not gonna stop us from what we do. And I will say this, you know, let your work be as loud as your complaints. Let your work be as loud as your complaint. Because a lot of people complain and ain't doing no work. Right. Ain't put no resources to it. Ain't volunteering no time, and we're definitely ain't giving no dollars. So uh, I'll just say that you know when you volunteer that time, do the things you can do. You know, even if it's like Miss Thompson, just cooking a meal, serving the community. I uh, appreciate the work Shaylon do, especially talking about mental health. That's something that a lot of people don't talk about, especially in the black community. We scared. You know, I, I'm quick to say, hey, look, I'm saved, but I get counseling. Yeah, yeah, I'm a licensed minister, but I go to counseling when I need it. I, I acknowledge all of those things. So we just want to thank the Black Belt, thank thank the community uh, for, for reaching out, for tuning in online. I know the night was a little, little different, but it was it just did, did my heart. It's well worth me flying all the way from New York down here to be here for this time. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead, Jadra. Go ahead, Jadra. Thank you all, even though Larry is not here, <laughs> and we bump heads, but it's all love. I just want to thank you all for what you do, simply because I know it's hard, because no matter what you say, certain things do get to you, right. and Robin and Larry work my nerves, <laughs> but you know, that's, what's the, that's the good thing about the show, different opinions, mm -hmm. and it's the job to, not you. Yeah, you, you good. You good. I knew what she was talking about. I love Tab. I love though he worked with her But that's that's a good thing. Yeah. And as Portia said, people are talking. And we are so glad that you all are here. And we are so glad that you all are talking. And I'm the type. I'm just I tell Portia, hey, let's do this, do this. But I'm kind of low key now. But what you guys do is much needed. It's very much so appreciated. You're bringing awareness and people are talking and you all are doing good things. You donate, you put in the time. And I and then to see black men doing something positive and especially in Greensboro in a Hill County period, I just want to say thank you guys and keep doing what you're doing. Hey, thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tyrone said he in New York now watching. So we the flip side. And Larry said he love you, Jay. So he just want to tell you that. Oh, he, he, he on the road watching like he doing. He, he, he had to go into his uh, traveling correspondent mode. But we thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Look to see you guys next week. And we will be on Christmas, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all doing Christmas, yeah?
Look at Robert Tabson. I don't know. I've been deep. I've been deep over yeah. I've been deep over Robert. Robert. Stay tuned. We'll stay tuned. Later. We'll let you know. Hey. I love the streets. I do. I do. I do. But we'll see you guys next week. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.